Live from downtown Detroit, home of WDIV and Click on Detroit, Local 4 News at 6 starts now. Churches ransacked and police make three arrests. The suspects as young as the age of 13. Jamie. He's an Olympic hopeful. Um, I think I'm number three in uh, Michigan history in the 60 meter hurdles at this point. And in his spare time, he's also working to help kids halfway around the world overcome their own hurdles. And we hear about road rage a lot, but rarely do we get the kind of close up look seen in this newly released video. Topping our news at six, that chaotic scene during the morning commute in Troy. This was at Crooks south of Big Beaver. Two men ended up in a wild altercation. It attracted a lot of attention, including from a local lawyer who wanted to stop the fight. Rob Maloney live tonight with the eyewitness accounts. It got really ugly, Rob. Yeah, Devin, you know, that video uh, is uh, is deeply disconcerting here. And here's the thing. Troy police still looking for the guy who drove over that guy's foot that you just saw there. In the meantime, the man who was on the ground and had his foot injured, well, it turns out, at least according to what he told uh, the, the attorney that we're going to be talking to in a second, that he's a cancer patient. So this thing just spirals out of control. So in the meantime, uh, we talked to Mark Rossman, an attorney who just happened on the scene, and he said what he saw was so appalling he had to get out and do something. The, the man who was in the westerly lane, who I understand is at large, or at least was shortly after the accident, uh, hit, the, hit the elderly man in the... Uh, in his left temple, uh, knocking him to the ground, and he fell like a bag of a bag of rocks. And uh, the first thing he said when I got to the scene, I heard him yell out that his arm was crushed. It's 8:30 a.m. Roads are dry, traffic thick, but moving on southbound Crooks. And that's Attorney Mark Rossman of Rossman Sachs PC. You see, standing up, trying to break up this mess. He tells Local 4 he told the older driver to get into his truck after that, which he did driving away and rolling over the younger man's foot. And unfortunately, when he decided to speed off, he drove over the foot of the man whose name is Pat, I learned uh, in talking to him mm -hmm. uh, during and after the situation. Uh, he drove over it. And in that video, you can see the, the car bounce up and down. And being close up to it, I was able to hear that foot. It sounded like it crushed. It sounded like every bone in that foot crushed. And so Rossman uh, said he was horrified by the whole situation. He said he even got involved against his better judgment. Uh, in the meantime, Troy police say they know who the driver is. They know that he lives in Troy and they're still looking for him. And if you know where he is, you know about the situation, they want to hear from you right away. Devin, back to you. Uh, that was a horrible description of the injuries we just heard. What do we know about that, Rod? Well, you know, that's the thing. The, the, the gentleman who was on the ground was brought to Royal Oak Beaumont Hospital uh, for his injuries, and we don't know, uh, but, uh, but uh, Mr. Rossman did tell me that the gentleman said his foot was okay, even though it was run over. Now, whether it was the front of his foot or part of the sneaker, we don't know. Yeah. But again, the notion that he's a cancer patient, uh, this can, none of this can be good for him. Yeah, certainly not. All right, Rod. A church in East Point is in need of major repair work, and three teenagers are now facing felony charges. Two of them are just 13 years old. Larry Spruill shows us the damage done to the building and how three young lives are likely to be impacted. The church did not want to talk to us on camera, but police say the three teens broke inside this youth center. They also say most of the damage happened on the inside, but take a look. You can see where they ripped the screen on the outside. And that's just the beginning of the rampage here at the Northeast Church of Christ in East Point. Police say three teens broke into the church's teen center Monday night. They started in the main office, breaking some glass and ripping up some books, throwing them on the floor. Now, Lieutenant Dave Ernat with East Point Police tells me from there they ransacked the kitchen, knocking over boxes of food. Finally, they entered the church's bathroom, causing damage there also. Well, that is uh, sort of odd. Um, you know, they probably figured that it was, uh, you know, closed, nobody around for the evening, and what they thought that they were going to get out of there, I have no idea. Two of the uh, subjects that were arrested at the scene, one uh, male juvenile, one female juvenile, are 13 years old, and then the third subject, two officers captured after a short foot pursuit, is 16. Now these young teens are facing some serious charges. Uh, breaking and entering of a uh, building with intent to uh, commit a crime, or to commit damage, and uh, that's a felony charge. 
And police say the teens also stole some money. We are talking about hundreds of dollars. We're live tonight. Larry Spruill, Local 4. So where are these teens now, Larry? Are they still in custody? Well, Kimberly, they are now back with their parents, but they will have to go back to court very soon. Yeah. Kimberly? Some serious charges indeed. Okay, Larry, thanks. All my years in television news, I'm still baffled by how you know this. Ben is pointing to a spot, a little blue spot over Albuquerque, New Mexico, and that is apparently what is headed our way. That, it was <laughs> a little bit of that. No, <laughs> we, we can look at the models and figure it out, yeah. but that is the system that we're watching. It's in the desert southwest tonight, and it's going to be in a hurry to get here. Uh, by this time tomorrow, it'll be knocking on our back porch as we'll expect those snow showers uh, that are right now, uh, that little blue out there again, by the, uh, the Kirky and Albuquerque, which is headed in our direction. We will be seeing that tomorrow, and you can see as that system just starts to spread across the central part of the U.S. Here we go, 6, 7 o'clock tomorrow night. That begins to move in. Notice that the core of that storm, though, stays off to our south. So the bottom line from Wednesday evening through Thursday morning, that's what we're expecting this to be impacting us. It's only going to be 1 to 3 inches. Most of it will be on the ground for the morning commute on Thursday, but could be some impacts beyond that. We'll check that out. And, of course, your frigid Valentine's Day forecast. You can follow the snow in on the local forecasters app. It is absolutely free in your app store by searching WDIV. Kim. Pittsville police are looking for an armed robber who forced a 21 year old to take money out of several ATMs at gunpoint. Police were called to an apartment complex near Packard and Carpenter in Ann Arbor. That's where the victim said a man with a gun picked them up and forced them to take money out of three nearby ATMs. Police say the robber was driving a gray 2012 Ford Focus. If you have any information, contact Pittsfield police. We've got a stranger danger alert in one Farmington Hills neighborhood. Incident occurred around 430 yesterday. A child walking in the area of Willow Lane and List Street near 8 Mile and Middle Belt said a man followed him as he walked home. Police described that suspicious person as a black male in his 20s, about six feet tall, was wearing a blue cap and a black hooded sweatshirt and pants at the time. So if you saw anything or you know anything about the incident, you're asked to call Farmington Hills Police. Port Huron police making two arrests in a string of robberies. The first, Tori Snyder, suspected of robbing the Speedway gas station on Ravenswood. Police believe he's behind other local robberies as well and was in one case helped by Crystal Schaefer. She's charged with unarmed robbery. Snyder faces that same charge along with armed robbery and a charge of larceny of a firearm. Troy police sharing the sad news today that Badges, one of its uh, feline officers, has died. Yeah, Troy police picked Badges, you might remember, to be the department's first ever police cat in 2018. Uh, and that is not Badges, but yeah. uh, they, it got a huge response on social media, that's for sure. But before she could assume her role with the department, Badges was diagnosed with feline leukemia. And earlier this week, she passed away from the disease. Luke's Landing took Badges in, caring for her these past two years. Badges is succeeded in the police cat role by Pawficer Donut. Pawficer. Pawficer, that's right. We are now 164 days away from the Summer Olympic Games. Always one of my favorite times. Uh, one University of Michigan track and field athlete hoping to be there in Tokyo competing. But his childhood halfway across the globe taught him there's more to life than sports, so he's trying to change the world one computer at a time. <laughs> Jamie Edmonds has his story. Here at Michigan, there's every resource you can think of. I'm talking about academically, but also athletically. I mean, look at this indoor track and field facility. But well, one student here is making sure that kids halfway around the world have access to technology. This is where Roland Amatafio feels most at home, on the track competing for Michigan. Um, I think I'm number three in uh, Michigan history in the 60 meter hurdles. But this is where he feels he can make the most impact in a place he once called home. I um, was born in the U.S., was born in Chicago, Illinois, but uh, was raised in Ghana for much of my early childhood. During the summer of 2018, Amata Fio and his girlfriend and his friend came up with an idea for a nonprofit. We realized that there was this great need um, all across the world with what's called the digital divide. They call their organization Five North for the coordinates of Ghana. They ask companies and schools to donate old computers. Um, while they might not be the, the newest like MacBook or whatever, it can be taken um, and repurposed. 
Then in the summer of 2019, they delivered 547 computers to 25 schools in a rural region of Ghana. It really kind of brought some perspective to where we are in the world um, and really understanding that there's so much more impact that we can have. Another trip to Ghana is planned for the organization this June. Then hopefully a trip to Tokyo will be in the plans for July as Amata Fio competes one last season as a Wolverine. He hopes to hit his mark, qualify for the Olympics, where he will compete for the country that means so much to him. In Ann Arbor, Jamie Edmonds, Local 4. There's a lot of good reasons to pull for him there. Yeah, we